Penn State sex abuse case was one of the biggest scandals in the history of the college sports, and it was a complete shock to most fans. But warning signs were ignored for years, according to a new book called Game Over, Jerry Sandusky, Penn State, and the Culture of Silence. Your authors Bill Moshi and Bob Borchak are joining us now. Welcome. Good to be here. Thanks to have Where us. is this case today uh, with respect to Mr. Sandusky? Uh, the trial is scheduled for mid-June, uh, but there was a preliminary hearing scheduled in December, and that didn't come off, too. So Mr. Sandusky is at home uh, with, uh, under house arrest uh, awaiting uh, the trial. And the conspiracy of silence that you suggest is what? Uh, one thing you take away from Game Over is how isolated Penn State is. Uh, in the middle of a valley, in the middle of the state, in the middle of nowhere. And there was this culture that kept everything inside that just could not put its hands around something of this magnitude happening at Penn State. Because Joe Paterno was God and Joe Paterno had created great fame for Penn State and his football team? Absolutely. Uh, everything that Penn State has is at the... Uh, base uh, Joe Paterno brought it there. Uh, he helped him develop the entire program and uh, he basically ran the institution and had pretty much say over everything including when he decided he might want to leave and who was going to be hired after him. And, and that's why it's so hard Bill and Bob for people to believe that Joe Paterno also known as Joe Pa didn't know as, as much as he as much as he's saying that he did not know I have a nephew who goes to Penn State and I remember when the story broke I would say Cameron he had to know and he would say no Aunt Gail Joe Pa didn't know he didn't know he didn't know and when you read the book you said listen Joe Paterno knew if his if one of his players got a ticket out of state he knew what the light bill was, so it's inconceivable to a lot of people that he didn't know. What do you all think after doing the research that you did? No coach has ever been more exalted than Joe Paterno in college football, but no coach has ever fallen so far so mm -hmm. fast. Uh, Joe knew everything on that campus, and if you look at what, uh, uh, what, what he said he didn't know and yet what happened, that Sandusky was gone a year after that 98 investigation in a news release without uh, the grand farewell befitting an icon uh, on Joe Paterno's staff and uh, all the events that transpired afterwards. But it boils down to what was he told? Was he told that it was just a little horseplay or in the shower, or was he told that it was something really specific and graphic and sexual in nature? Exactly, and that's uh, you know one of the things that's just so perplexing about this. It, it's a, a tragedy of Shakespearean proportions, in the sense that. Uh, 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 Joe was told something, but the assistant said he, he made sure he described, he knew exactly what, what he was talking about, and he knew. So it's uh, uh, one, uh, it just it boggles the mind uh, on how deep it goes. What's interesting to me about this whole thing is whether uh, you make knowledge based on one incident, or should he have known about Jerry Sandusky, and it's, is it believable that he did not and that no one in that community had ever said anything to him about a coach that worked under him? Yeah, it, it, it's almost impossible to believe that he did not know. If he did not know that there was an investigation by the campus police in 1998 and that Jerry Sandusky was gone a year later, then there was another incident in 2002 that he was told about at his kitchen table. Uh, if you don't connect the dots there, uh, I. I think you're just trying to avoid a situation. And so what does it say about Joe Paterno if he knew? Joe will always be remembered as a great coach, a, a, a leader of men. His football players loved him, and yet there was maybe that one lapse of judgment, that sin of omission that will always define his legacy. Yeah, he said he, it himself. Yeah, uh, he said yeah. it himself. I wish I, wish I, I would have done more. Yeah. Uh, and that pretty much summed it up. And Bob, you point out too, number one, you guys did this book in record speed. 10 weeks, I would imagine you didn't have a lot of cooperation when we were talking about the cone of silence. We had, we had more people, uh, between us we got 80 years in this business and we had more people hang the phone up on us, and not more people, your no, calls. nobody returning calls, nobody uh, doing anything, but nonetheless we found 100 people that told us stories about what was going on and uh, I think we got the story straight. But let's talk about Jerry Sandusky for a second because they said he was a popular coach, didn't swear, didn't curse, didn't smoke. He says that he was a pretender, that he loved children, but that he would never hurt them. And people believe that about him. Some people believe that about him. If he were to draw up on a blackboard the ultimate portrait of a pedophile, you'd start with a sports icon, uh, 
who founds a charity. Uh, he's known as the Male Mother Teresa of Central Pennsylvania. It's a, a charity that's recognized by George Bush as one of the thousand points of light. It's joined at the hip with a prestigious university. It's the perfect, perfect disguise. And you use the word pedophile, sexual predator. Well, I mean, there are 10 young men who have made damning allegations against Jerry Sandusky. And of course, he has the presumption of innocence. Uh, but. Um, I've covered hundreds of criminal matters as an investigative reporter for 30 some years and uh, I've never seen a case that were, was as expansive as this where, that didn't come, end up with some kind of uh, conviction. What's hap going to happen to Mike McQuarrie? He's the graduate assistant who made the discovery. It is a, a very good question. I know he was suspended with pay. Correct. Uh, he's Penn State born and bred. He grew up in State College. He played quarterback at Penn State for Joe Paterno. He always wanted to be on Joe Paterno's staff. He got his dream job, and yet he witnessed something and is talking about it now. And where is he now? He's still in State College, but I understand his house is for sale. House is for sale, and, uh, you know, he's got uh, a lot of people in State College have put the bad guy label on Mike McQuarrie because of the long period of time that went from when yes. he saw this event in 2002 yes. and when he actually came forward. And uh, But I watched his testimony in the preliminary hearing against the two other guys that were charged in this matter. And uh, he was very certain, very emphatic, and uh, was not uh, uh, beat up at all. Very, very believable as a witness, and according to some. Well, Even if he did wait for eight years to uh, yeah. report. Thank you. Thank you both. Thanks for, Thanks having, for having us. The name of the book, Game Over.